Hi, I'm Nick. And I'm Mariana. And we're here today to show our favorite four player board games from our collection. So we're gonna start with um, the games that are more ca in the casual realm and then we're gonna go towards uh, deeper board games. So you have uh, a selection from uh, going from uh, more casual to more hardcore games. On our channel, you can find more uh, board game content, how to play videos, unboxing and reviews. And if you are enjoying the content, uh, consider subscribing to receive our latest updates whenever we have any new videos coming up. And don't forget to hit the bell button as well, so you get an announcement every time a new video comes out. So our first choice is Ticket to Ride. This one is the um, 10th anniversary edition box, but any Ticket to Ride uh, works as well. Um, I think it's a very good option for you if you're looking for a game that's easy to teach. Uh, it has a very nice thematic into the game. So you have the, the trains, you are like a, a railroad tycoon, and you are essentially uh, taking the trains and building routes. Um, depending on the Ticket to Ride version you have, sometimes it's in Europe, sometimes it's in the United States and so on. So you take those, those trains, you use your cards to build your lines, and then as you build the lines, the connections between cities, you get points according to the cards that you have showing the connections. It's very simple to play. Um, it plays really well in four players. You can actually play it uh, in five players as well. It will take a little bit longer, but it's a very, very good entry choice. The second game we want to show is Tiki Topple. Uh, we tried this first time when we went to a board game cafe and we had so much fun we had to buy. You have those tokens or your tikis that each player gets an objective at the start of the match and you get points if you make your tiki end up uh, at the end of the rounds in this uh, in their position. So if you get it there, your Akamai worth uh, nine points. Uh, and the way you play it's super simple. Like you, you have some actions that you, you go in play. You have a tiki up one that you move it around one. And it's very simple to play. It's so much fun. It's very chaotic too. And this is what I like the most about this game because you cannot predict much, you cannot like count cards and see how things go because there are so many actions that it's, it's crazy. It's much fun to play with different levels of um, knowledge of board game, plus the color palette is beautiful. All right, our next choice is Azul, uh, and I chose specifically the Summer Pavilion uh, version because I think it fits uh, better with the thematic and it's, uh, I think it's a little bit easier to understand than the regular Azul. In this game, you are building the summer pavilion. So you have to take the tiles and then um, build the different colors on the, on the board. And um, as you are building those colors and you're placing them, you're getting points. It's really fun. The thematics are very strong in the game and it's an easy game as well to teach other players. You can play from two to four players. I think uh, playing four players is really fun and the game is beautiful. Um, it doesn't take that long to finish. We have done a how to play video on this uh, board game. So if you want to check out how to play, um, you can click the link above or you will find the link also in the video's description. Roll for the Galaxy is the first of our intermediate board games list. Uh, it is my personal favorite when we were playing. Uh, the goal is to basically conquer the galaxy and reach a, a determinate amount of victory points. But one of the things that I like a lot about this game is that it's a dice building game. It's not like a deck building game. You have those beautiful dice and uh, it is very fun to play. The iconography is really hard to grasp at first. But once you get it, it's really fast to play and, and very fun too. And this game has a lot of different corporations that you can play with and it really changes your play style each time that you play. And it is a very balanced game. I like that a lot because each match is different, yet you're still doing different stuff. You can play from two to five players, uh, but it doesn't take too much. It's, uh, it's quite short because everyone is playing at the same time. So this is one of the things that I also like about the game. All right, into the next one. So the next one we would recommend is um, Catan. 
Uh, this is a really fun game, it's very classic. On this game, you are one of the settlers of Catan and you are settling on the island. So you are building roads, cities and outposts. And then as you do that, you can train, trade resources with other players. Every turn you throw a dice and then depending on the, the dice roll, you're gonna get different resources which will help you building the outposts, the settlements and so on. It's very fun, the thematic is really well applied into the game. It's not, it's not too abstract. Still a game that you can uh, teach um, your family or anyone new to board games to play and it's gonna be fun. If you like D&D and worker placement games, Lords of Waterdeep is the game for you. The objective of the game is to gain influence in the city by sending adventurers into quests and to build facilities and develop the city of uh, Waterdeep. Um, you play from two to five players uh, and it's, it's kind of a light worker placement. There isn't much fight between uh, the actions. If you want more details about Lords of Waterdeep, Nick made a review uh, on the channel, so you can check it out later. All right, so continuing the intermediate level uh, board games, the next one would be Terraforming Mars. In this game, you play as one of the corporations that's trying to terraform the planet. And basically, you, um, you, it's an engine building game where you are uh, trying to increase the oxygen levels, the uh, water level, and also the temperature level of the, of the planet. And the corporation that's mostly successful in doing so wins the game. We would really recommend you playing four players. It's very fun, the, the thematics of the game are also very strong. You guys see like we like games that have strong thematics that are well fit into the, the game. Um, and you're you are, you are, you are picking tiles as well that you're placing as you terraform the planet. So you are adding oceans, cities, um, and several other um, infrastructure things to the surface of Mars. So you see the, the world changing and Mars changing as you play. So that, that's uh, something really cool. So it's a highly recommended game for you. Frisco is another mid-level board game. And I like it very much because it's about painting. And if you follow the channel, you know what I do in the channel. Basically, you have a painting workshop and you have to paint the fresco of a chapel. Um, it's a worker placement game, but it has very interesting activities that are different. One of them is the fact that you can choose at what time your workers will get up. If you get up too early, you can get access to the shop to buy paints first. So it means less fight for the colors, uh, but at the same time, they get more grumpy. So you might in the long run um, lose some actions. After you buy paints in the market, you can mix them for different colors and those colors will be the ones that you use to paint the chapel. And it's very thematic again uh, and it's, it creates some interesting uh, choices to say like, um, am I going to wake up early to get that paint that I need or am I going to wake up later uh, because I want to buy things that are more uh, less expensive. And another thing that you have, you have some bonus for moving the bishop around. Fresco, you can play from two to four players and it's not a very long game. It takes one and a half hours, two hours to play. One advice though, it's not a game that is very colorblind friendly. So take that in consideration if you fall into that category. And at the end of the game, whoever has more points wins the game. All right, so the last game we would like to recommend you is Agricola. So in this game, you play as a farmer and you are basically building your farm, uh, growing your farm from planting crops to taking care of uh, different animals like sheep, pigs, uh, cattle. And then you are building fences around them. You are breeding them so you can have more. And your main goal is to not starve actually. So you have to feed the population from your farm and as you make the farm bigger, you have more, uh, more population and basically every family member of your farm uh, needs to be fed. And also those family members, they are, um, it's a worker placement game. So each family member is an action. It's an extra action you can do per turn. What's really cool about the game is that um, every, every new round that you play, a new action gets revealed. 
allowing you to buy more things. And there are more options that you can do than the number of players and the actions. Therefore, um, the actions that people didn't choose um, they keep getting some of them keep getting new bonuses every round which eventually triggers you to actually cash in like a lot of um, a lot of rewards uh, it's a very well done game like the thematics are very strong it's one of the classics from U Rosenberg and it's amazing I would really recommend but this is a very heavy game so you're not gonna be playing uh, very frequently but when you play it's it's really gonna be fun so with Agricola uh, we finish our list of our favorite four-player board games. I hope you have liked it. And uh, if you have any comments about those games or other games that you think are really cool to play in four players, let us know. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.